spork is an eating utensil, much like if you combined a spoon with a fork. Some consider it to be the pinnacle of man's creation. <laughs> it's kind of funny. One time while I was at Taco Bell, I asked them for a fork, and they... Oh, you don't want to hear about this kind of spork. <sighs> spork is a ruby gem that helps speed up the loading of your test suite, and it's just as awesome as its utensil counterpart. Let me show you how it works here. Now, when you run your Rails test suite... Uh, you probably notice at the beginning that it takes a while. It's just, it just seems like it's not doing anything until finally it responds and shows you the results. Now, it says right here in our spec that this took less than one and a half seconds, but it seemed to take a lot longer than that. So let's time it and see exactly how long it takes. Now, the reason it's taking so long is because it's actually loading up your Rails application here. And notice it took over a six and a half seconds. And most of that time was spent loading the app, not actually running the specs. And this is what Spork helps solve. The first step is to go to your gem file and add Spork to a test group inside of here. Now I already have a test group down here, so let me just add Spork down here. And if you have a Rails 3.0 application or higher, you'll need to make sure to use the pre-release of the gem, which uh, is currently 090 release candidate. So just make sure to specify that version if you're adding it in a Rails 3 project. By the way, the application I'm working with here is the app I built in episode number 275, where I show you how I test. And then run the bundle command to install it. And then you'll need to run the spork double dash bootstrap command to prepare the helper file. And notice it automatically detected that I'm using our spec here and it just modified our spec helper. Let's see what it did. Now you can see here inside our spec helper that spork provides two blocks inside of here. One called pre-fork, which happens uh, when the Spork server starts up, and then one called each run, which gets executed every time you run the spec suite. Now, it's a good idea to try to move as much of the spec helper as you can inside of the pre-fork. That way, it'll only run one time. So let's try to move this entire content inside of our pre-fork block inside of here and see how it works. To use Spork, just run the Spork command to start up the Spork server, and this is where it's going to run the pre-fork block so it only runs one time. And then inside of a separate tab here, let's try running the specs again, but this time through the Spork server by passing a double dash DRB option here. And notice that it starts up much faster than it did last time. Let's try timing it to see the total time that it takes to run this. And notice it's about two and a half seconds versus the six and a half seconds it was before. And that difference becomes even a greater the larger your application gets. So uh, Spork is awesome because it starts up the app itself one time, and then you just use that every time to run your specs. Now, starting up the Spork server every time you want to run your tests is kind of a pain. And I personally really like Guard for automatically running my specs. And thankfully, there's an excellent gem out there called guard spork. So let's try adding this to our gem file and make sure it's inside of the test group here. And then run the bundle command to install it and then run guard init spork to add it to your guard file. Now if we take a look inside that guard file, you can see we have our spork config down here below the R spec one. And one change you'll need to make is moving the spork config to the top here because it needs to start up before R spec or cucumber or any other uh, test related guards. Another option you'll need to do is adding the CLI option to uh, our spec here. So we can add the double dash DRB option when it runs the command. This way it will use Spork. So you'll need to make that change for any other test related guards such as Cucumber. Now we no longer need to start up that separate Spork server. We just start up guard and it automatically launches Spork in the background and handles running the tests as we change files. So that's really awesome, much faster than having to manage that separately. You can see that in action if we try modifying a spec here and save it. Once we save it, a second later, it runs the spec. Let's uh, fix that spec again. And then a moment later, it'll run it again, and now it's passing. Pretty awesome. Now let's talk a little bit about configuring Spork. One thing you may run into is you change a file, and that change doesn't seem to be picked up by Spork, and the only way to fix it is to stop and restart Spork. 
And if that happens, it's because the file was loaded in the pre-fork block, but not reloaded when you call each run. So what you'll need to do is somehow reload it inside of the each run call. And for example, factory girl is a common case because the factories are loaded at the beginning here. And then if you want to, if you change the factories, you'll want those changes to be picked up automatically. So you'll need to reload those inside of the each run call. And thankfully, recent versions of factory girl come with a simple uh, call that's uh, reload. So call factory girl dot reload, and that'll automatically reload the factories. So if you make changes, they, they will be picked up on the next spork run. Now, another common case is the spec support directory. Notice that the support files are being loaded inside of the pre-fork block. So if we change any of these support files, it's not going to be picked up on the next run. One solution is to move all of the uh, file loading into the each run block, but keep in mind that the more you place inside of the each run block, the slower it's going to take to uh, load before each run. So it would be nice if we can keep this inside of the pre-fork block and just reload spork automatically whenever uh, those files change. And thankfully, a guard spork can help us with this. If you go to your guard file, you can see that there are several watched files here inside of your guard spork block. And if any of these files change, it's going to automatically reload spork for you. So it's going to pick up those changes. So we can easily add our spec support directory into here. And that means whenever we change one of those files, it's automatically going to be picked up. This is why guard and spork are such a killer combo. While we're here inside of the guard file, let me give you a quick tip on how to deal with a slow running test suite. If your tests take more than a minute to run, you probably don't want to run them quite as frequently. And there's a couple options you can pass to the guard rspec config here. One is called all on start and just pass false to this. This way they won't all uh, run on the start of the launching guard. And another one is called all after pass and just pass false to this as well. That way when all your specs pass again, uh, it doesn't start try to rerunning all of the specs. This way you have more control when all the specs run. You could just hit the return key inside of the guard terminal if you're using the latest version of guard and that will just run all of the specs. Now here's another tip that's unrelated to Spork, but it really helps me when dealing with large test suites. And that is to go to your R spec configuration in your spec helper and add these few lines right here. And I'll add these in the show notes for this episode. Basically what this will do is whenever you add a focus tag to a given spec, it will only run that spec instead of all of them. For example, let's say we want to focus only on this one spec right here. We can just add a focus tag at the end like this. And then notice that our spec only ran that one spec which had the focus tag on it. Really useful. Now there are some cases when a bit of code gets called in a spork prefork block when you don't really want it to and there's no easy way to move it into the each run block. And for that, spork provides something called trap method. And this will basically say, instead of calling this method immediately, uh, let's trap it and save it till after we do the fork and apply it when we do each run. And this is really useful for some cases, uh, such as if you're using Mongoid or Devise, because they do some loading inside the pre-fork block that you don't really want to do. So just be sure to follow this wiki page here if you're using those tools, if you want to use it with Spork. Well, that's it for this episode on Spork. It's a wonderful tool to help speed up your TDD process. I really enjoyed using it, and I find, uh, combined with the tips that I mentioned earlier, that this really scales well with uh, even large Rails applications. You can get feedback very quickly when you're uh, doing test-driven development. Well, I hope you enjoyed this episode, and I'll see you next week.